good afternoon to you, Darren Bent. Good afternoon to our listening millions. And good afternoon to John Norman as well. I use that phrase every single day. But, John, uh, today's anything but a good afternoon, not just for cricket fans, but for sport fans as well. We've lost an absolute superstar, haven't we? Mate, I've, I've got uh, goosebumps. I've just realised. You know what? The news came... I was on the way into TalkSport Towers, uh, the news building, and got the, got the news like we all did via social media. And um, it's one of the most shocking moments of, professionally in terms of cricket, it's mm. one of the most shocking moments of my life. And uh, for the last two hours, we've been, me and you, we were chatting outside, me and Ben too were chatting outside, and I was helping with some guests, and I've been on Times Radio and Talk Radio. And, and the last 20 seconds, I finally sat down listening to you just then, and I, it's it's like I've just realised what's happened. Mm. For the last two hours, I've kind of put my professional head on, and I've I've come up with guest ideas, and I've come up with areas of his life and that we need to focus on. And I've I've, I've you know I've called friends and colleagues like Mark Nicholas, who was as close to Shane as anybody. I mean, I I think we should be very thankful that he came on. Mm. I mean, he's literally it's one of his best friends has has passed away, mm. and he's come on and he's spoken to us and. It, you know, he wrote his book. He idolised Shane, and um, and now here we are. And I'm just sitting and I'm thinking, wow, what is it about Shane Warne that has made me so ridiculously? Why is this such a powerful moment? Because, and it's because he's been such a, he's been, he's been, he's been cricket. That's it. He's been cricket mm. since since the mid '90s. When I think about my absolute addiction and love for the sport. It's 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 tied yeah. in with Shane Warne. Uh, it's going to be interesting this afternoon because, of course, if you would have been listening to TalkSport when the news broke, you'd have heard Paul and Andy discuss it. And, of course, they're both cricket experts. Uh, the reason we've got you in, John, of course, is because you are TalkSport's cricket expert. Uh, but myself and Benny, we, of course, come from a football background, so mm. our knowledge of cricket. I'm going to be brutally honest with our, our listeners, but we don't know too much about cricket. But one thing, Benty, that you and I have learned, certainly over the last couple of hours, but we sort of knew... Anyway, was just how much of a, a superstar, not just a cricket superstar, but how much of a superstar Shane Warne was, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. Yeah, you're talking about somebody that transcends sport. Um, people that maybe not necessarily cricket fans, but know who Shane Warne is. The name alone um, is, is iconic. But you're right, it's, it's, it's a sad day. Um, absolute icon. I mean, the first thing I did when I heard the news was, was call my dad. He's a big cricket fan as well, and he mm. could believe it. I mean, he loved watching Shane Warne. Um, some of the battles between England, as you said there, and, and Australia. It is a really sad day. But as I said, not just for people that like cricket, that obviously are, are cricket that love watching it. It's about people that love sport in general. And when we, obviously recently we've lost some real, real icons of their various sports, the likes of people like Kobe Bryant. We lost Maradona not too long ago. Um, and it's really, really sad, but as I said, to, to get people mm. on and to pay tribute to someone who is an absolute icon of a sport. Um, I, I hope it's I hope it's nice. Uh, John, what was interesting to me is you and I were speaking outside for, for quite some time and you tried to put it into perspective with regards to my knowledge of football and how it would affect you, uh, you know, a great sports person, a great cricketer passing away. And you said to me, name the five greatest footballers of the last century. And I said, Pele, this is my view. This is just off the cuff. I said, Pele, Bobby Moore, Cruyff, Maradona and George Best. I mean, there are other ones, Beckenbauer. And then you named your five cricketers. And of course, you, you mentioned uh, Don Bradman, uh, Gary Sobers, Viv Richards, of course, Jack Hobbs. And Shane Warne was in that list of five. So for people that are listening... With my knowledge, my you know not great knowledge of cricket, for for you to come up with a list of the five greatest, most influential, exciting cricketers, not just on the pitch but the personalities as well that they possess off it. One thing I've learned over the last couple of hours is people love Shane Warne not just for his ability on the pitch, but for what he was like off it. And it wasn't just it, it, everyone loved him. It wasn't just men. It wasn't just cricket fans. It was just men and women. We just there's something about him that he had this Paul, this sort of George Best effect, if you like, that just made everyone, not just Australians, but English cricket fans as well, just love him and would sadden that he wasn't one of our own being an Englishman. He was that good, wasn't he? Well, look, he absolutely stands up alongside Kobe Bryant and, and Diego Maradona, right? That That's the level we're talking about. And he had the common touch in a way that, I don't know whether Kobe Bryant had the common touch or not. I, I don't... Maybe Diego Maradona did, actually. Uh, Shane Warne certainly did. He was a boy from the Burbs. You know, he grew up in suburban Melbourne. And 
You know, there's sometimes Australians try and make more of their upbringing than is actually maybe relevant. They maybe look at other cultures and think that there's more substance to where you grew up than where I did because it's it's a comfortable place. Um, you know, it's a new place. And, and Shane Warne never, ever tried to make more of his upbringing than what it was. And he was very comfortable in his upbringing. He was very comfortable with who he was. And he never changed. And that was the great appeal with Shane Warne. He literally, it was though he stepped off the beach and he put on his cricket whites and someone threw him a cricket ball and then he became the Diego Maradona of cricket. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was that. It was that juxtaposition between an aura and a, and a brilliance. So, so I've spent my time, you know, following cricket, full talk sport, okay? When Shane Warne walked down the corridor, even now, you felt you felt there was greatness, and he was basically he wanted to get out of there because he wanted to go and you know play around a golf or go and have a beer. I mean, he literally was, but it was there's an aura. You know it, and yeah, you yeah, know yeah, it, yeah. Darren. It almost, when there are certain like be, players, you, certain people, yeah. if they walk in a room, you just feel it. You almost feel yeah. it before you see yeah. it, mm. and yeah, and he you, was that. You don't even know necessarily that person's in the room. You just feel something. Yeah, you just notice that everybody kind of changes. Mm. And he was that, but then at the same time, he was just some regular, some regular guy. Mm. So it was, it was crazy. Well, listen, we've got lots to talk uh, about over the next few hours. As I mentioned, John, you're staying with us for at least ninety minutes, maybe more. Um, but as always, the lines are open. It's such a sad day. We really don't know what to say. But in times like this, maybe you just want to talk about it. Maybe you just want someone to talk to or someone to listen to. Then that's the reason Talksport exists. So if you want to share your memories. Of Shane Warne, then pick up the phone. We'd love to hear from you. 03717 Now, um, as the news broke, Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs, I mentioned earlier on, they were on air. They were joined by Mark Nicholas, the former Hampshire cricketer, and of course the co-writer of Shane Warne's autobiography. Mark paid tribute to his dear friend. I mean, <laughs> uh, this is one of the greatest cricketers there's ever been, but much more than that, he's one of the most inspirational sporting people that's ever been. He he turned a whole generation around to a new type of, in a way, sort of rock and roll cricket. He, he played it to an extremely high level, as I say, one of the greatest that has ever played the game, and yet he always was an entertainer. He was never compromised by his art from what he really valued, which was you know, loving the fact that people so loved watching him play. Um, amazing guy, extraordinary energy. I mean, the only consolation that I can come up with sitting here is that well, he gave this life a good crack. I mean, he, mm. he fitted more in in his 52 years than most of us do in 90 of them. Yeah. I wrote his book with him, um, mm. and I spent a lot of time with him in my life. We were very close, and what would I say? I would say that I would trust him with my life. I would say that uh, I would rate him as one of the great enthusiasts for anything. I mean, he was up for anything. I would say that his stubborn streak worked for the good of the game in that he wouldn't compromise on things he didn't believe in. And I would say that of all the people you could imagine being a terrible loss he's top of the list really because yeah. he gave so much uh, that was mark nicholas as i said the former hampshire cricketer and of course the co-writer of shane Warne's autobiography uh, in case you're joining us now um, looking back it sounds even mad to say it, on uh, the life of shane Warne, who sadly passed away age 52 john when um w w one of the, the things that everyone's going to be talking about is the ball of the century i mean there were so many highlights in his career of course but that's probably the main one certainly the first one just just explain to, to myself and Benty and other um, sports fans listening that aren't necessarily hard and cricket fans what it was like, not necessarily when the ball was bowled, but when you, you capped eyes on him and you saw this, this young kid with, you know, this bleach blonde hair all over the place, the big lipstick on as well, with a big smile on his face, taking the ball. It was his first time he'd ever bowled on English soil as well. First time we'd really actually seen him. Can you remember what it was like seeing this just, you know, larger than life character? It was awful. <laughs> Shane Warne made my fall. life a misery. <laughs> it was awful. I mean, there's no real, 
The thing is, remember when uh, the United fans clapped Ronaldo off the field when he scored the hat trick? Yeah, the Brazilian yeah. Ronaldo. Yeah. So in cricket, you do have this really kind of strained situation where essentially you can want your team to win, but I think it, it's, it leads itself that it's much more easy to have individual success, but then still lose in cricket. And you also spend a lot of your time watching it because it goes on for so long. But essentially, it's quite rare for an opposition fans to applaud a, a guy off the field in the manner that they did at Old Trafford. And I'm, I didn't do that with Shane Warne, don't get me wrong. I couldn't. Um, but it was... But you can... When you get older, when you're a kid, you can't do it. You, you, you can't do it. But when you get older, you can appreciate genius. As long as England still win, right? Mm-hmm. I was too young. So Shane Warne was awful, awful, awful because he was just too good and he just made my life an absolute misery because Australia beat England. You know, it was like cheering West Germany against England in a World Cup, you know. Mm. You couldn't do it as a kid. But there was South Africa, you see. And South Africa had just come out of apartheid. This is going off a tangent. You're probably looking at me thinking, what the hell am I talking about? But essentially, at the start of the 90s, there was... um, Nobody would buy anything from South Africa. They had apartheid. Then Nelson Mandela was released from prison and the system changed and South Africa were allowed back into sp- the sporting sphere. So essentially, um, they could play Australia. And watching South Africa play cricket meant that I could finally enjoy watching Shane Warne because you weren't cheering on South Africa. So for the first time in years, I could sit back and watch Shane Warne and actually support support him. And the guy was theatre. He just ruled. He owned his space. He understood that it wasn't just going to get a bowler out by throwing a ball in a funny way. Mm. He was going to get into his head first and he'd wait at the top of his mark and he'd move his field around and he'd delay it and delay it. And he would just own everything. He'd own the strip. He'd own the pitch. He'd own the fans. He'd own everything. And when he bowled, you just watched and waited. And more often than not, he just, he won. Mm. And against England, it was an absolute nightmare. But when he played South Africa, I could cheer him on. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, we're here till seven o'clock. I I know that it's a a death in the cricket world. It's a death in the sporting world. It feels like there's a death in the family. It really feels that awful today. And we like to think that... I mean, look at that, Andy, look at that, look at that. Right? Yeah. Now, we're listening, we're talking about Shane Warren passing away and we have to do it in hushed tones and we have to be respectful. But that, and I'm pointing up to a screen, mm. okay, and it's Shane Warren on the balcony with a stump in his hand and he's basically gyrating on the balcony to the England fans who've been given him pelters. You know, he would stand there with a bottle of champagne and he'd pour it over his head. You know, mm. he would give it to the England fans. He would do it on the field, but they still loved him because he was them. He was there. It, that's how. That's how. That's why we love Ali McCoist, because he celebrated yeah. a goal. How you do it? Well, listen, Ali's, and that's Ali, how we did it.